yeah good morning uh, all my dear students today we are going to discuss about uh, the most important order coleoptera coleoptera is the largest order in the class insecta almost like 25% of the insects what you see in the nature they are all coming under the order coleoptera it means something like one in every four insects what you see is actually coming under the order coleoptera generally we call them as beetles generally we call them as beetles you may might remember the music band beetles but these beetles are different and these beetles are uh, very very characteristic feature having the four wing which is called as a elytra the four wing which is called as elytra you see these beetles everywhere on the earth you see these beetles in the water you see these beetles on the humus you see these beetles on the plants you see these beetles on the decomposed materials you see the beetles everywhere they have a different kinds of habitats and as well they have a different kinds of food habits they can eat the leaves they can eat the roots they can eat the dung they can eat the insects as well they can eat the decomposed materials so it means they have a different habitat and also different food habits and similarly these beetles vary from size it can be as small as very small insects like the beetles what you see in the rice floor at your home or as big as rhinoceros beetles stag beetles they are very very big the size is very means the size is very that is the reason they are very very successful that is the reason they are almost occupying 25% of the total insect species on this earth that is the one of the largest this is the largest order in the class insect as i told you that these beetles they are very very characteristic feature of having the front wing which is called elytra this is very very tough the four wing is very very tough and hardly very very hard and highly sclerotized and highly sclerotized these beetles are everywhere they have a different kinds of habitats different kinds of food habits as well and the size is very and the size is varying and they are in different colors as well they are in different colors as well you can see in this picture you can see in this picture various kinds of beetles various kinds of beetles and they are in different shapes different colors and probably you will see these left side very very calm very busy in actually rolling the dung and this is called rhinoceros beetles you can see these beetles with a long antenna which is almost doubling the size of the body there are different kinds of beetles which are available and the coleo means sheath like sheath like winged insects the four wing especially is a, like a sheath which covers the body which also protects the hind wings and also the entire body very very tough very very hard highly sclerotized this as i told you that this is the largest order in the class insecta comprising almost like 25% of the known insect species 
they occur in soil as i told you that they occur in soil they occur in humans they eat on rotten wood they eat the food made they eat the other insects they eat the plants they eat the roots they eat the reeds they eat the flowers what not they eat everything they live in water they live in soil they live in humors they live on the plants they live on the leaves and they they live on other insects as well they also act as a predators they also act as a pollinators that is a beauty because they are very very successful and because they have a different habitats and also they have a different habits as well and also the size varies from minute to large and also the size varies from minute to large as i told you that they are highly sclerotized not only the elytra but also the entire body the head you can see here in almost all the insect pictures given the head is highly sclerotized and head is freely movable normal in most of the beetles whereas prolonged into a snout kind of structure in case of weevils you can see the weevil here the head is actually prolonged and the mouth parts are almost at the edge of the head the antenna is usually 11 segmented and it's very actually you can see there are different kinds of antenna like pectinate flavellate clavet the compound is are normal the mouth parts it's always a chewing tank chewing and biting tank it means the mandibles are very very well developed the mouth parts of not only the adult remember the mouth parts of all the larvae are also chewing and biting tank and in some of the adults the mandibles attain a greater size you can see here the stag beetles they are very very big mandibles the mouth parts of the adults are chewing and biting type and also the mouth parts of the larva they are also chewing and biting type that is the reason they could able to eat any kind of food materials the thorax the thorax is uh, the pronotum is enlarged and freely movable and we focus more on the wings so look into the wings here the four wing is elytra the four wing is elytra leathery kind very tough very hard and their duty is basically to protect the hind wing the membranous hind wings and also the entire body actually these four wings are not useful for the flight purpose and they're very hard very tough you can as well feel it just catch hold of any beetle and try to feel the four wing and very tough sometimes you can't break it very very tough legs are walking or running type and the tarsal segments are actually variable and i just brought this picture basically to make you understand how tough the elytra is and believe me some of these wonderful insect lovers they are actually rearing these beetles in a large quantities and the elytra they separate but they kill the beetle and they take out the elytra and with this elytra because that's very tough very hard highly sclerotized and very colorful that is the reason these elytra are also used for the jewelry which is used very popularly in some countries and the girls really love it very colorful very colorful and the abdomen abdomen and especially the most important point here is the abdomen of the female especially the terminal segments of the female 
can see here the terminal segments of the female are retractile and tubular which functions as a ovipositor which functions as a ovipositor in case of larva which is an immature as these fetuses belongs to holometabola which contains the la egg larva pupa and adult stage as i told you that the larva have a highly developed mandibulate mouth parts the larva the immature of these coleopterans is called as a grub which is the most important feeding stage but some of these grubs some of these grubs are also acting as a predators there are usually two kinds of grubs you can find in coleoptera one is about scarabi farm the another one is campodi farm you can see in this picture here the scarabi form larva and the campodi form larva the scarabi form larva is usually fleshy very soft and the most important character they have usually the three pairs of true legs jointed legs only in the thoracic region the abdominal legs which we call them as a pro leg or false legs they are absent whereas in case of campodi form the body is looking like an alligator or a crocodile which is very fast moving because they have both the thoracic and also abdominal legs and remember the scarabi form and campodi form larvae both will have a highly developed mandibulate chewing and biting kind of mouth parts the pupa is exerted usually pale in color sometimes it's very dark most of the adults they may have a stridulatory or sound producing organs but they are variable and you can see the wonderful you can see the wonderful ladybird beetles here the family is coccinellidae and we call them as a ladybird beetles and you can see different kinds of ladybird beetles in this picture in telugu we call them as action tapu general ga coleopteran sambandhinchina anni insects nu kuda manam beetles an english lo ante penku purugulu an telugu lo antam endukante dani yokka four wing adi penku laaga untundi adi iraga gatti ga untundi andukani ఆ ఫోర్ వింగ్ ఏ బాడీ మొత్తాన్ని కవర్ చేసి ఉంటుంది కాబట్టి ఎంటైర్ థొరాసిక్ అండ్ అబ్డామిన మొత్తం కవర్ చేసి ఉంటుంది కాబట్టి పెంకు పురుగులు అంటాం కాక్సనెల్లిడ్ బీటిల్స్ ని తెలుగులో మనం అక్షంతల పురుగులు అంటాం సో దిస్ కాక్సనెల్లిడే విచ్ ఇస్ అ వెరీ 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 ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఫ్యామిలీ టు రిమెంబర్ అండ్ ఆల్ ద ఇన్సెక్ట్స్ of the family coccinellidae we call them as lady bird beetles and these beetles are loved by everyone everybody loves to see them and the most interesting and important point you should remember these lady bird beetles are the farmer friends the lady bird beetles are the farmer friends they are the friends of the farmers except one which is a best in the brinjal otherwise all the ladybird beetles are very very helpful for the farmers because they eat other insects because they eat other insects we will try to understand the important characteristic features of these ladybird beetles 
you can see the pictures on the right side the beetles of moderate size not very small not very big but it look like a ovoid convex dorsally they are brightly colored and they do have spots and the spots are on the elytra and based on the number of spots and the pattern of spots and based on the color of the elytra we actually identify the genus and species the head is actually partially concealed from the pronotum with the pronotum antenna is clavate and very short antenna legs of course they have a highly developed legs and the tarsi is four segmented but usually appear to be three segmented but actually four segmented grubs the interesting point here you should remember the grubs looks totally different from the adults and the grubs are usually covered with minute tubercles or hairs or spines and you can see the grubs here they look like a alligator they look like a crocodile they look like a crocodile and they have a very very well developed mandibulate mouth parts and the right side here is the pupa this is the adult this is the larva this is the pupa both adults and grubs the larvae what we call them is larvae or grubs they are highly predaceous and they eat on other small insects they eat on eggs of other insects except the one which is the brinjal beetle otherwise all coccinellids are helpful to the farmer because they eat all other smaller insects they are farmer friendly friends of the farmers you can see in this picture you can see in this picture there are different kinds of aphids there are different kinds of aphids like yellow color aphids or green color aphids and which are eaten by our wonderful ladybird beetles there's nothing but coccinellid beetles you can see here the beetle adult is actually loving to eat the aphids and similarly the grub or the larvae which is in fact they are the aphid lovers i don't know when you give a preference test giving some aphids some mealy bugs some eggs but they would love to eat the aphids maybe they are very tasty i just don't know maybe the coccinellids loves the taste of aphids and one coccinellid beetle can eat more than 50 aphids so it means they are very helpful to the farmers because when the, the farmers have these aphids in the field they can release as well the coccinellid beetles which can eat all these aphids overnight and these are the important these are the important uh, coccinellid beetles you should remember menocallus sex maculator this is very very common you can see in every plant and this is coccinellid as septum punctata because they have seven spots total this is rhodolia cardinalis which is uh, having a red and black patterns and this rhodolia cardinalis is commercially rare commercially red and the fourth picture here with yellow color and black spots that is called ladybird beetle and brinjal and that we call them as a hadda beetle which is nothing but hinocephalacna vicentio punctata and this is the only ladybird beetle which is a phytophagus whereas all other ladybird beetles are useful and helpful for the farmers i have a wonderful video you can see this video which explains how these beetles are eaten
you can see here the lady the wonderful lady bird beetle is uh, trying to eat the aphids these aphids are black in color you can see the carnicles as well and these are the grubs actually these are the grubs of our wonderful lady bird beetle yes you can see the grubs here and nicely they are picking up the small aphids and they are picking up and they are eating these are the grubs this is the grub of our lady bird beetle which is trying to eat the aphids yes so nice ah this is it has picked up one and eating as they have a very highly well developed mandibles you can see the legs very strong legs in the grub even in the adult you can see the antenna and how they are picking up the yes yes it is it is catching one and trying to eat so it means the ladybird beetles and the grubs the adult beetles and also the immature larvae which is nothing but grubs they are very very useful and helpful for the farmers because they eat these sap sucking insects called aphids they not only eat the aphids they as well eat the mealy bugs they also eat the smaller larvae sometimes they also eat the eggs of the other insects that is the reason these ladybird beetles are very very helpful they are farmer friends they are predatory in nature except one all ladybird beetles are really helpful for the farmers only one ladybird beetle which is a pest is hadda beetle and here you can see wonderfully how it is actually eating the aphid it means they have a wonderful highly developed mandibles and uh, these mandibles are useful and we'll go into the next one next one is bruchidae next family is bruchidae the common name of bruchids we call them as pulse beetles pulse beetles are uh, very common you just talk with your mother and ask her whether she finds any beetles when they store when she stores the bengal gram black gram or green gram this is very very common and one of the most deadliest and especially the governments are facing serious problem in storing all these pulses at the fci godowns and warehousing godowns for the food purpose the pulse beetles are universal and they are their entire world the species may be different but these beetles are everywhere they are not so much species specific but these beetles can damage any kind of pulse any kind of pulse and we will try to understand the important characters of the bruchids they are you can see on the right side picture they are actually short stout bodied beetles and head is actually produced anteriorly into a short and broad snout antenna you can see here the antenna is serrate salic antenna is serrate the prothorax is very very prominent you can see here the prothorax is very very prominent and somewhat triangular you can see shield like kind of like what we have learned during hemiptera especially the pentatomids and similarly here also these bruchids will have a triangular prothorax elytra you can see here the difference between the coccyn lids and the bruchids is you can see the elytra shape in such a way 
then the last segment of the abdomen, the last tip part of the abdomen is open to sky, which is not exposed. The elytra is short and never covers the tip of the abdomen. Legs are short, and tarsi formula is 5, 5, 5. Four legs and mid legs and hind legs. The tarsal formula is 5, 5, 5, 5. And also you can see the hind femur. You can see here, the hind femur is very, very thick compared to the prolex and also first pair of legs, second pair of legs. The hind legs, the hind femur is very, very thick and often with two kind of structures. This is the most important taxonomic feature. The larvae or the grubs usually undergo hypometamorphosis as the first in star with well developed legs and possess spines or two to thoracic plates, whereas the second, third, and fourth in stars they are apodous. It is as simple as like this these beetles will lay the eggs on these pulses. You can see the eggs. Just take out few black gram or green gram and also Bengal gram. You can see the very, very small eggs of these beetles. So once the larvae hatches out of the egg, the larvae will have a wonderful mouth parts, legs and they bore inside. They just try to go inside. They go inside, then they will mount into the second in star. Then they lose the legs because they don't they don't want any legs. They don't require any legs because they are already inside the pulse. They have a wonderful material. They don't need to go anywhere. So that's what is called hypometamorphosis. That's what is called hypometamorphosis, and that is the speciality of these brooches. That is the speciality of these brooches. And I have a wonderful video here. You can see. You can see here the it is actually a brooched. It's not weevil. It's actually a brooched. You can see the brooches how they are going. And these insects you'll be seeing. These insects you'll be seeing on a daily basis. And the third family, important family, is scarabidae. The scarabids are horn beetles, dung rollers, or fruit grubs. You can see the horn here. The head is prolonged like a horn, whereas the mouth parts are located bottom. That's the reason we call them as horn beetles. We also call them as a dung rollers. This is a very common, you will see. We call them as root grubs because their larvae is actually eating on the roots of the plants. That's the reason. Sometimes you see, especially the coconut and other plants, the entire plant is dying because the roots are eaten away by these grubs. They are actually stout bodied. You have seen, they are actually stout bodied, over or elongate. And the head is often slender. Sometimes they have a tooth like of structure. Sometimes they have a bifurcated frontal horn. It depends upon the species to species. The antenna is always a laminate type. You can catch hold of because these beetles are very commonly seen. The prothorax is very large. They have prothorax is the place where they have some kind of horny like structure in horn beetles. Elytra not usually covers the abdomen completely. You can see here. The elytra is actually not covering the abdomen completely. And the tarsal formula is 555. Five, five. Adults usually feed on the foliage, whereas the grubs are usually feed on the roots. The grubs are scarabiform, C shape. You can see the grub here, wonderful mouth parts with three pairs of legs on the thoracic region and no legs in the abdominal region. As they eat on the roots, we call them as a root grubs. The adult eat on the foliage, 
whereas the grubs eat on the roots. So just imagine how dangerous these insects are. If you have any manure pit nearby, you can definitely see these grubs. It's very important economically and it causes some of these root grubs, especially in sugar cane and other forest areas. And also the, especially in case of coconut and also sugar cane and they, they severely cause the damage. And these are the example, you can see this is a typical symptom you might be seeing here and there. That's the coconut because the adult beetles, they have eaten away when this leaf is in the primary stage. And these are the beetles, these are the grubs, root grubs, you call them very, very commonly seen. This is the root grub of sugar cane. And these are the grubs actually eat away the roots. And actually the adults will stay in the neem, whereas the grubs are in the sugarcane field which are eating away the entire sugarcane. With this, we close this today's session and then uh, we'll uh, come back again for completion of other families within the order Coleoptera. Thank you very much. See you again. Bye-bye.